I don't know if I have to introduce somebody, but I guess I'll introduce Enrique. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, my name is Enrique Sanchez. I uh, would like to thank uh, our elected officials and our candidates here for taking the time uh, to uh, uh, be part of this endorsement process. And I would like to thank uh, One Fair Wage for placing their trust in working class uh, elected officials and candidates who are fighting hard every day for the communities across this uh, state. We need to push for a $19 minimum wage and we need to continue pushing for them like the, like the bill that Senator Culkin and Representative Henry's introduced this past legislation season. But it is also maybe time to start considering pushing for a more aggressive legislation that targets a $23 to $25 minimum wage and competes with the increased inflation rates. Cost of living in Rhode Island is becoming extremely expensive with gas rates going up, electricity rates going up, uh, Rhode Island Energy that was just that just bought National Grid in Rhode Island uh, released an announcement that they would increase electricity rates by 50% by October. That is unacceptable. It is unacceptable because working people in Rhode Island and especially in distressed communities like Providence, Central Falls, Winsocket, Pawtucket, Westerly, Newport are dealing with uh, low wages. A lot of marginalized communities live in those areas where people aren't earning living wages. The sub-minimum wage can no longer be accepted or tip, for tip workers and especially those in the restaurant industry. In Providence and across Rhode Island, our cooks, waiters, bus attendees, and everyone in the restaurant business have has felt and continues to feel the hard hit on this industry. Poverty, racism, classism, sexual harassment are all major direct consequences of a $3.89 hour wage for tip workers that affects mostly women and black and brown people in our state. This pandemic has had a direct negative impact on restaurant workers and businesses that have provided service to Rhode Islanders and to our city and have not prioritized, our city and our state have not prioritized protecting workers and increasing living wages. Our undocumented communities across the state have, ha have been hurt drastically. Workers from countries like Guatemala, Haiti, the Dominican Republic, countries from Southeast Asia, folks from across the world, the Middle East and Africa, have came to this country looking for higher wages, better quality of lives, but have found themselves suffering during this pandemic because it has impacted every single working person and across this, across the state and across this country. It is unacceptable the conditions that people have lived in communities like Silver Lake, Hartford Park, the Mount, areas of Mount Pleasant, Oneyville, South Side of Providence, the West Side, and the North End. A lot of people are in dire needs of increased living wages because food, gas, water, mortgage, rent, clothes, Everything is getting expensive and our city and our states is not doing enough to increase living wages and a $19 minimum wage, you know, competing with our current inflation rates is going to minimize that issue, those issues. But the, the, the way that the, heart, the housing market is crashing, the way that the housing rent mortgage is going up, we need to definitely, con we need to start considering pushing for $23 to $25 minimum wage in the next couple of years. Thank you so much for our folks for joining here and thank you so much to One Fair Wage for the support and for the endorsement. Thank you.